Hi everyone, welcome back to Learn with Men Nuggets. In this video, I'm going to talk about dumping syndrome. Dumping syndrome is a complication that occurs after gastrectomy, that is after resection of a part of the stomach. Dumping syndrome occurs when undigested food moves quickly from the stomach to the small intestine. Basically when food gets dumped into the intestine before it is properly digested. This happens because the pyloric sphincter that controls the pass of food from the stomach to the small intestine is removed or damaged during surgery. There are two types of dumping syndrome. Early dumping syndrome and late dumping syndrome. First, let's look into early dumping syndrome. Early dumping syndrome arises 10 to 30 minutes after eating. When undigested food passed to the intestine, there will be an influx of fluid from the bloodstream to the small intestine in an attempt to dilute the food in the small intestine. This will cause distension of the bowel and therefore the patient will experience bloating, abdominal cramps, nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. The influx of fluid to the small intestine may also cause a reduced blood volume in our blood vessels causing hypovolemia. Hypovolemia in turn will activate the sympathetic nervous system, resulting in symptoms like sweating, tachycardia and palpitations. Late dumping syndrome on the other hand occurs within 1-3 to three hours after eating. When there is no pyloric control, a large amount of undigested food is dumped into the small intestine. This will result in a sudden enzyme action to digest the food in the small intestine. So insulin levels go up in an attempt to maintain blood sugar levels. However, there will be an over-secretion of insulin resulting in hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia may manifest as weakness, confusion, tremors and dizziness. Also, hyperglycemia will activate the sympathetic nervous system, resulting in symptoms like sweating and tachycardia. Most patients with dumping syndrome can be managed with simple dietary modifications like having small frequent meals, avoiding simple sugars and replacing them with complex carbohydrates, incorporating high fiber and protein rich food, and avoid drinking water during meals instead have water in between meals. A minority of patients who don't respond to dietary modifications can be given drugs that slow down gastric emptying or inhibit insulin secretion, like acarbose and octeotride. If medical management also doesn't work, then patients may need reconstructive surgery to reconstruct the pyloric sphincter. However, in most patients, symptoms resolve with dietary modifications and reconstructive surgery is rarely needed. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel. Also, check out our podcast, Med Nuggets Podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. You will find interesting topics such as new FDA-approved drugs, cabbage for knee pain, sleep hygiene, gut-brain connection and many more. Thank you.